to authority. This is used in writing, speeches, and debates as a fallacy or an argument based on unsound logic. When one enters a debate, one popular way to determine a winner or to see if someone has better arguments is to attach everything to logical consistency. If your words cannot string together a logical and balanced dialect, then one would be hard-pressed to rebuttal your arguments. However, an appeal to authority is when those speakers or writers claim that something must be true because it is believed by someone who is said to be an authority on the subject. Why do we do this? This way of thinking can open up a person to manipulation and or control. I know it sounds crazy, but the more you trust authority simply because of authority or the perception of authority, the more power they are given to exploit said belief. This appeal to authority is seen everywhere on the internet. One simply looks towards the credentials of a particular person to determine if they would take what that person is stating as facts simply because of their position. Many fitness online personalities become personal trainers simply because of the power behind authority. The notion is the same for any authority figure. Scientists, doctors, those with a PhD, which elevate the authority perception to levels where people will believe and trust sometimes to an absurd degree. In 1963, Stanley Milgram performed a now infamous and controversial social experiment at Yale University. There were over a hundred participants that were tested to see how far they would go if they were guided by an authority figure. The experiment took place in the Yale Elegant Interaction Library, and the findings of this study were so disturbing that the format was banned never to be reproduced. The setup was simple. One participant would control a shock generator, while the other would be shocked in the other room whenever they got a question wrong. Subsequently, every wrong question would require an increase in shock. So as the participants in the other rooms continued to get the answers wrong, the shock would increase from mild all the way up to severe, and the buttons were clearly labeled, with severe having danger tags connected to it. It was essentially progressive torture. Here's the thing, however. The participants being shocked were actually not being shocked at all. Instead, they were actors who would provide audible feedback of their dismay and discomfort. But the participants providing the shock were not actors and believed that there was someone in the other room truly being electrocuted. There was a man in a lab coat that encouraged them to continue to dangerous levels. What the result of this study found was shocking as 65% went all the way to the final severe switch when performing the experiment simply because they were guided by an authority figure. Now this isn't to say that an authority figure is simply lying to you because that isn't the point of this argument. It is simply a dialect of caution since those in authority understand the power that they hold. In 1998, a gastroenterologist, Dr. Andrew Jeremy Wakefield, was the lead author of a paper that was published in the Lancet Journal a very reputable British journal. He claimed that there was a link between measles, mumps, and rubella vaccines with autism and bowel disease. But after his publication, other researchers were not able to reproduce his findings or confirm his hypothesis. In 2004, an investigation by the Sunday Times discovered that the paper was fraudulent and that Dr. Wakefield did not disclose his affiliation with medicine companies that were a direct conflict of interest. Also, the original raw data was discovered and it indicated direct contradictions to the claims of the children's in the research done by Dr. Wakefield. His study was fraudulent and in 2010, a five-member statutory tribunal found three dozen charges, including four counts of dishonesty and 12 counts involving the abuse of developmentally delayed children. The panel ruled that Wakefield had failed in his duties as a responsible consultant as he acted against the interests of his patients. Dr. Wakefield was barred from practicing medicine in the UK and the Lancet retracted his study. 
but for many, the damage was done, as many children had to endure painful and evasive testing due to his papers. And vaccinations for measles, mumps, and rubella declined, and many children died because of it. The parents refused to vaccinate and lost their child due to this information. The paper created by a perceived authority figure caused relatives to prevent their child from receiving proper medical treatment that resulted in their death. That's disturbing, powerful, and very telling of our willingness to succumb to authority. A simple encyclopedic look into other studies that garner similar outcomes show that the study findings could not be replicated. Therefore, there were more studies showing that this was not the case and one study that it was. It was enough to create fear and obedience for many. Dr. Wakefield's fraudulent study has changed the climate of vaccinations. And to this day, there are many people who believe that vaccinations can lead to permanent mental and physical damage. Authority control can be seen in a small scale. Even this YouTube video from 2009 shows a young boy telling the cars to honk two times before entering. Something very meaningless. Why would anyone do this? It makes no sense. Honking two times clearly has no impact if you enter or exit an area. However, no one honked when this boy was holding up this sign, except for maybe one car, and just probably out of amusement. But the moment that sign was given to a police officer or an adult male in a uniform that had a perception of authority, nearly every single car honked twice before entering. Clearly, they should know that it is meaningless to honk twice, but still, an authority figure was holding up the sign. So people succumbing to authority figures can happen at any capacity, as long as the person is perceived to be an authority figure. Also, many doctors specialize in one field but venture out into another simply to garner the notoriety of specific topics. Simply because someone is a doctor does not automatically give them the knowledge on all scientific data regarding health. Many are in the dark in regards to current research and others stick to medicinal understanding and surgical understanding. However, they tend to speak on diet and exercise even though those things were very rarely utilized in their studies and once they become a doctor, many of them do not continue to venture into further studies in regards to health and diets. It isn't to say that they are all unaware, but to bring light to the scenarios where they may be doctors but are not omniscient or all-knowing. Always question everything. And this authority control extends itself into social media as well. Simply having a platform lends one to believe that the person harbors a certain level of credibility. In 2014, Variety magazine commissioned a survey and asked that the participants rank 20 popular personalities based on approachability, authenticity, and other criteria which the respondents deemed as aspects of overall influence. The final ranking showed the top five spots were held by YouTubers. They ran the study again in 2015, and this time, the top six spots were held by YouTubers. The connection that the audience feels is stronger and more personal with their favorite YouTuber versus an individual on TV or movies. If you couple this with a credential like a PhD or personal trainer certification, you're enhancing your power to control what one believes about a certain topic. My message isn't to say that they should not be trusted, but simply to say that they should be used as an information vessel that leads to more personal research on whatever topic you are interested in. Be very wary of those who talk science, but do not provide links to studies so that you can continue your own research independent of the authority figure. Simply having a PhD, being a doctor, or a personal trainer does not remove them from having conflict of interest, as seen in the Wakefield fraudulent study on vaccinations. Always question everything you read or hear from everyone, because the unfortunate truth is that they are not always looking out for your best interest.
What is going on guys? This is my fifth video essay. I wanted to do a little bit of a sidestep and uh, talk about authority figures, especially because um, there are a lot of contradictions out there, especially between doctors, between people with PhDs. And I want people to understand why there can be contradictions and what you should do to ensure that you're as informed as possible. It can become a little overwhelming to see all of these different opinions or different positions on specific topics and not understanding why. I hope this video opens your mind to do your own personal research when in pursuit of information. And I wanna go ahead and thank my patrons from my Patreon. I'm gonna put their names right up here. As always, guys, I'll see you on Sunday for another FAQ. Peace.